was West Virginia getting JT Daniels out of the transfer portal, does that now mean they have the best quarterback in the Big 12 going into 2022? Let's talk about it. What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome to another edition of Coos' Corner. Around here, we don't serve up anything except top shelf college sports content. So, so come on in, sit back, relax, and make yourself at home. If you like top shelf college sports content, please hit that red subscribe button. Hit the red notification bell to be notified of future videos. Give me the thumbs up if you like this video. Share it with all your college sports loving friends. And also, I'm, I'm going to go over these quarterbacks. I'm going to rank them in order from 10 to 1. As who I think will be the best prospective starters for each team going into the season. I want you to let me know in the comments, what do you think about my rankings? Do you agree with them? Let me know where I got it right. Let me know where I got it wrong. At the end of the day, it's just my opinion, and your opinion is just as important as mine. So let's get on with the show. Number 10 on this list, I've got Hunter Deckers from Iowa State. So Hunter Deckers has backed up Brock Purdy the last two years. He's gotten limited action. His numbers are 25 out of 43, which is 58.1% completion percentage. 311 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, a 137 quarterback rating. Now, I've got Hunter Dakers 10 just because I don't know much about the guy. Uh, he hasn't played much. So I, I don't really know what to expect. Iowa State fans, let me know in the comments. Is Hunter Dakers a lot better than the number 10 quarterback in the conference? I, I want to hear. I want you to educate me on it because I don't know much about the guy. But I'm, so I'm basing it strictly on experience or lack of. Tyler Shuck from – Texas Tech is at number nine. Now, Tyler Shuck is actually competing with Donovan Smith for the starting position at Texas Tech. And it's kind of up in the air right now which guy will start. But just for the sake of this video, I picked Tyler Shuck. Tyler Shuck has been, has been playing college football for three years. He's been his first years of his career at Oregon, the last one at Texas Tech. His career numbers, he's 182 out of 274. 66.4% completion percentage for 2,575 yards, 22 touchdowns, nine interceptions, a 165 quarterback rating. So really good numbers for Tyler Shuck. So it looks, you know, statistically, he's a really good quarterback. Texas Tech fans, let me know. Who's going to win the starting job Do you guys? for you guys? Is it going to be Smith? Is it going to be Shuck? And do I have him too low on this list? Number eight, now I might get some flack for this one. But I can live with it. And I've got Adrian Martinez from Kansas State at number eight. Now, Adrian Martinez has, is a, was a four-year starter at the University of Nebraska before transferring over to play for the Wildcats and Coach Chris Kleiman. So he's got a lot of Power 5 experience. And Adrian Martinez is really dangerous with his feet. He's rushed the ball for over 2,000 yards in his four years in Nebraska. However, when you look at his passing numbers, well, let me just read them to you. He's 670 out of 1,055, which is 63.5% completion percentage. That's not terrible. Not great, but not terrible. 8,491 yards, 45 touchdowns, which is not, you know, not a huge amount for four years, 30 interceptions. He, he has 30 interceptions and 45 touchdowns. That is not a good touchdown-interception ratio. He's very turnover-prone. That's the reason I've got him at number eight. Now, for those of you who know more about Adrian Martinez than me, which would probably be UK State fans, am I wrong about this? You know, are those interception numbers deceiving? I want to know in the comments. But I just, to me, if a quarterback throws 30 picks to only 45 touchdowns, that worries me. Number seven, I've got Quinn Ewers from Texas. Now, Quinn Ewers has yet to throw a pass at the Power 5 level. At least if he has, it did not show up in the stats on – sportsreference.com, or ESPN. So I started to put him at the bottom of the list because just he, because he's not played. However, Quinn Ewers is one of the most talented high school prospects to ever come into college football, if not the most talented, talented as far as his recruiting rankings when he came in for the 2021 class at Ohio State. Now, obviously, he spent that one year at Ohio State before transferring back to his home state of Texas to play for the Longhorns. But C.J. Stroud was a starter at Ohio State, and Quinn Ewers, I think he only saw the field in mop-up duty, and I don't, I, to my knowledge, he didn't throw a pass. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong on that. But because of his potential and his talent level, I've got him at seven instead of at the bottom. So, you know, at the, by the end of the season, heck, he could be number one on the list. I don't know. But I thought seven was a fair spot to put him based on his potential and his lack of experience. 
Number six, Max Dugan from TCU. Max Dugan has been at TCU for three years. He's 472 out of 806 passing, 58.6% percentage, which is not very good. 5,920 yards, 41 touchdowns to 20 interceptions, which is not great. Uh, 132 quarterback rating, which, again, is not very good. But Max Dugan, just he's, he's the type of quarterback that just seems to find ways to win football games. He has ran for over 1,400 yards in his career, too, so he can hurt you with his feet. But at the end of the day, I felt because of his ability to win games and make plays when, when the team needs him to and his ability to hurt you with his feet, I put him at number six on this list. Despite his, you know, despite the fact that his passing numbers are, are arguably one of the worst of this group. Now, number five, I've got Jalen Daniels at Kansas. This was a tricky one for me because I really like Jalen Daniels. I watched him play against West Virginia last year. He looked really good in that game. Kansas was able to move the ball on West Virginia and, and gave us a scare in that game. You remember they beat Texas last year. Jalen Daniels was a quarterback then. When they benched, when quarterback Jason Bean went out, and I don't I don't remember if he went out because of an injury or just lack of performance, but when he went out and they brought Jalen Daniels in, Kansas looked like a completely different team offensively. They were able to move the ball. They were able to score points. Uh, Coach Lance Leopold's got that group playing really well, or at least much improved you know, compared to Kansas standards. And I think they have nowhere to go but up. I think they are going to go up, and I think Jaden Daniels is going to be a big reason for that. He's been at Kansas two years. Uh, his career numbers are 157 of 269, 58.4% completion percentage, 1,578 yards, eight touchdowns, seven interceptions, 112 rating, which is very low. But if you look strictly at the 2021 season where he played six games in, he was 81 for 117, 69.2% completion percentage, 860, 860 yards, Seven touchdowns to only three picks and a 146 quarterback rating. So he had pretty good numbers in 2021. And that was all against Big 12 competition. So I think Jalen Daniels has a, has a potential to be one of the top quarterbacks in this league. I put him middle of the road because he does play for Kansas and they probably won't win a lot of games. But I think individually he will put up pretty decent numbers. So I've got him in the middle of the pack. Number four, this was another tough one. Gary Bohannon with Baylor. There again. His stats won't wow you, but yet they're not terrible either. And the guy wins football games. So I've got him at four here. Uh, his numbers, when you look at his numbers over the course of his career, and he's going into his fifth year at Baylor, uh, he's 191 out of 313 passing, 61% completion percentage, 2,394 yards, 20 touchdowns to only seven interceptions, and a 142 passer rating. Uh, but when you look at his 2021 numbers, which is what I think here you got to take into consideration more heavily because he was the full-time starter in 2021. He was 173 for 275, 62.9% percentage, 2,200 yards, 18 touchdowns, seven picks, 147 quarterback rating. So you take into – now he, does, he didn't throw the ball a lot because Baylor ran the ball a lot. But Bohannon, and, you know, and, and he can run a little bit. He, he can scramble around and make plays when he needs to. But the reason I've got him at four is just because the guy does not turn the football over. He takes care of the ball. He does what he needs to, needs to do to win games, and he, he led better to a Sugar Bowl victory last year against Ole Miss. So I've got to give him credit for that. So I've got him at number four. Now, Blake Shapin is said to be competing really hard with Gary Bohannon for that starting spot, but at the end of the day, I think Bohannon will get the nod up because of his experience. Number three, this is where I've got JT Daniels. JT Daniels, we all know he's been injury prone. He, he played one full season at USC. Got injured in the first game of his second season. Set out, was out that whole season with that injury. After the season he transferred to Georgia, was there for two years. Battled injuries there for the entire two years. But in the seven games he played at Georgia, he won them all. And his career stats, since in his days at USC and Georgia, he's 389 out of 610 passing, which is good for 63.8% completion percentage, 4,840 yards, 32 touchdowns, 16 picks, 143 quarterback rating. Now, those numbers won't blow you away. But you got to keep in mind, his the only full season he played at USC, he was a true freshman. I think he was only like the second true freshman maybe to ever start at USC or something like that. And he also enrolled early at USC, is my understanding. He was a 17-year-old kid, basically, starting quarterback at USC. So you've got to, and, and was still able to win a starting job. So JT Daniels is extremely talented. And those even though those numbers aren't bear, aren't terrible, He's got the capability of doing even better than that, much better than that. So I've got him here at number three. Uh, I don't have him at number one just because he doesn't have any experience in the Big 12. 
And I'm looking also when you look at his no, overall numbers, I've got to be fair. So I've got him at number three. Number two, I've got Spencer Sanders from Oklahoma State. Spencer Sanders won first team All Big Twelve last season. He's been at Oklahoma State for three years. His numbers are 553 out of 886, 62.4% completion percentage for 6,911 yards, 50 touchdowns, 31 picks, 140 quarterback rating. Now, those numbers don't, I mean, those numbers don't necessarily wow you, but you got to also add in the fact that he's rushed for over 1,500 yards in his three years at Oklahoma State. So he can also hurt you with his feet too. And like I said, like I mentioned with some of these other guys, he just wins football games. And a lot of his interceptions last year, Matter of fact, most of his interceptions last year all came against Baylor. I think he threw like seven or eight picks against Baylor alone last year. Uh, and I give Baylor, a lot of that credit goes to Baylor's defense. They had a really good defense. Uh, like I said, he, even though he's turned it over quite a bit, a lot of that is due to the competition he's played. And I think you got to take the good with the bad there. Uh, and he offsets some of those turnovers with the ability to make plays with his feet. And after, at the end of the day, Oklahoma State finished second in the Big 12 and won a New Year's Six Bowl game over Notre Dame. And Spencer Sanders was a quarterback of the team that did that. So i got to give the young man credit for that. So I've got him at number two and number one on the list, Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel coming in to, to the Sooners, Oklahoma Sooners program after spending three years at UCF. Uh, at UCF, he was 554 for 913, 60.7% completion percentage, which doesn't sound great. But he threw for 8,037 yards. 70 touchdowns, now 70 touchdowns, and only 14 interceptions with a 157 quarterback rating. So, you, I mean, the completion percentage don't wow you, but everything else does. I mean, 8,000 yards, 70 TDs. I mean, my gosh, and that's in three years, guys, and actually not even three full years. He got injured in game three of the season last year for UCF. So he's only played two full seasons in three games or basically in his career and has put up those kind of numbers. And you put him with Jeff Lebby, who's arguably one of the brightest offensive minds in the game at Oklahoma, this kid could flourish next year. And he, he might be in the Heisman talk. I don't know. Now, I've got to take in consideration, to be fair, he did do that against American Conference Group of Five competition now. He didn't do most of that damage against Power Five competition. So was, I'll be anxious to see how it translates to Power Five ball in the Big 12. But you still got to give him props for those numbers. Those are fantastic numbers. I don't care what level of football you're playing. Those are really good numbers. And I think Dylan Gabriel do, will do really well at Oklahoma. And I think he will end up – and I think he is the number one quarterback going into the 2022 season in the Big 12. We'll see if that pans out. Once again, let me know in the comment section, did I get your guy wrong? Do you think your guy should be higher or lower? And give me reasons why. I want to know why. I'm okay if you disagree with me. Like I said, this is just my opinion. And I want to hear your opinion. If you want to support me financially, guys, I would really appreciate it. You can become a member of Kuz's Corner. Take advantage of the perks that come along with that, like really cool emojis, uh, special live streams and, and videos for members only that I can do. Hit the join button right underneath this video. Become a member. You can do it for $2.99 a month, guys. It doesn't cost you much at all. And then also you can hit the links in the description box to place your bet US bets. Buy your Fanatics gear. Buy your Amazon gear or your, or your memorabilia from Amazon. All those links will help out my channel, and it doesn't. None of that costs you a dime. It just gets you into the website. The links just get you into the website, so you can do your make your purchases, or do your betting or gambling. Guys, if you don't want to do any of that and you just want to support me the quick and easy way and the free way, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, or hit the red subscribe button if you haven't yet. All of that costs you nothing, and it all helps out that YouTube algorithm and helps my channel. And with that, I'm signing off. You country roads.